these black Christian pastors don't know ish about the scriptures. We're dealing with the word elect. So the topic is be elect. What does it mean? So this is a video. And by the way, this video that you're going to see, I, I saw this video mm, maybe four months ago, and I have it somewhere. I had pulled it up. Maybe it's in my favorites or something. But this black past. Let me bring, bring you over here. This individual right here. And I was going to do a video on him, but I didn't. But a couple of uh, the men at GMS uh, did videos. So I said, let me come back and just do my own take on it. And it's very simple. I mean, all you got to do is go, I, you know, so, hey, sometimes you take one word, do a word search, and then you read, you pick out certain precepts, or maybe you read all the precepts with the word elect, and you'll get the understanding. Uh, I'm going to let you hear it, then I'm going to go to the script. I'm going to go, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up the blue letter. I'm going to just put in the word elect and see how many times the word comes up. And to show you that he doesn't know what the who the elect are, what nationality, what nationality, excuse me, are the elect. He doesn't know who the elect are, but he'll he'll spout out the Lord didn't come for Israel, he came for the elect. Well, the elect are the Israelites, and I'm gonna back it up with scripture. This is a basic, easy um lesson. This is why you don't speak to pastors and Christians. You just look, if you if you talk to a as black Christian, I'm not even going to call them Israelites because it's such, it's, they're in so much darkness. If you deal with a, like the IUIC, they went to all these blitzing these churches. Like I said in previous videos, they did, out of all those churches that they must have talked to thousands of people in these different churches because a lot of them came out of these churches because they came disturbing them on a Sunday. And um, out of all that mess that they went through for I, I don't know how many months, they did not get one, not one, according to what I know. I'm almost po uh, positive because if they had gotten at least one Christian from a church to come in the IUIC, wouldn't they have an interview with the guy? Wouldn't they say, well, this is one of the guys from the XYZ church, Baptist church, that heard us and he called us and he said, he no he's no longer a Christian. He's an Israelite now. We gave him a purple T-shirt, whatever. And uh, we're going to do an interview with the guy. The guy got a new name. You know, he, he doesn't have a, a heathen, you know, Christian name. He has an actual Hebrew, not necessarily Lashawan Kodash. He'll give you a hillbilly Bible, hillbilly name from the Bible. Like he, they might call him Jeremiah, which Jer J did not come about until the foot. Uh, 1524 by a man named uh, Tresino. Look it up. I did videos on that. Anyway, they did not get, and you can prove, you can say, no, Tal, we did get five. Then I'll say, okay, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. But I don't believe that's the case. I don't believe you got one person, right? But um, when they went out to these different, and it was, I'm not knocking them for going, going out there to these various churches. I'm not knocking them. You know, they're pushing the scriptures say go out into the highways and the byways and go out among the people, right? Among the Israelites to wake them up. So I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking that. Uh, you go to these gas stations with these uh, convenient, you know, 7 Eleven and the gas station and all that, and you normally set up there. There's certain places where you go to week after week after week, and you're talking to the people in the corner, whatever the hell they're doing, selling drugs, or whatever the fuck they're doing. You talking to them week after week, telling them we're gonna come back here next week. Why in the fuck would you come back out there next week if they didn't hear you the hear you the first week? You're not following the instructions of the uh, of the of the uh, Yahweh Shai in uh, Matthew 10. He gave you the instructions as to how to go out and teach. Now what we do is we don't go to every place. Okay, this week let me go on this street, and next week let me go on that street, and next week go over there because guess. Guess who does the um? Guess what thing does the heavy lifting for us? The internet, the YouTube. There's no way in hell you could have got all those members in the IUIC of the various states and countries without the YouTube. If you attempted to try to go to all those different states, you'd be stuck in one state. Um, the the, the different countries, let alone the countries. 
the thing that made this this uh, Israel thing open up is the internet, not us. So read uh, Matthew chapter ten. Read the whole chapter. He gave you the, that's the commission. You got these dumbass Christians saying, "Well, the great commission is in uh, Matthew twenty eight, nineteen, and twenty. No, it's not. He, he made a statement. He said, go out and teach the nations, meaning the Israelites scattered among the nations, not the actual nations, or the Israelites being called or labeled nation like Cornelius. The commission is found in Matthew 10 because he goes, he's, he dedicates the whole chapter to what you got to do when you go out. And he said, I commanded, command thee, go not into the way of the Gentiles. That's one of the first things he says. So that's the commission, the, com the great commission the, the Great Commission is uh, uh, Matthew 10. Matthew 28, he just reminded them, remember what I said, go out and teach. He gave them the Great Commission, commission in a nutshell. But I'm going to say it again. Matthew chapter 10, he goes into detail as to what you do concerning the Great Commission. Um, let me see. Uh, Okay, let me let you let me let you listen to this guy. Oh, let me finish saying. I lost my thought. When you deal with a Christian, you ask, you tell them, "We out here with Israelites. We out here to wake y'all up." The people in North Central and South America of Indian and Negro descent are the twelve tribes of Israel. You're not Gentiles. Yeah, but wait a minute. No, we are Gentiles. Our pastor said that we are Gentiles, and and furthermore. You got the white people over there in, in, in Israel. Those got to be the people because they're in the land. Then you explain that they came in the land, which that's not their land because they're not the people. And then you say, maintain that you are those people. And then you may go to Deuteronomy 28 and you say, well, how did the, how did the, uh, this is fishing, by the way. We're fishing. Most I said, he's going to send, send in Jeremiah, send, send for many fishes, and they shall fish them. And then he shall send for many hunters. We don't come in a hunting spirit. You don't yell at them. You're fishing. You're very quiet. You reason. All right? See, these guys come in one mode. So you, you tell them that, uh, how do we come over here? How do we get over here and, and serve slavery? It's, they know that that's a fact, you know? They might say, well, what's the difference? The difference is another nation took you and put you into slavery. If somebody kidnapped your daughter and your son and your mother, you ain't going to say, oh, well, so well, that happened. It was the will of the Lord. Let me just go and do my business. No, you would call the police. You would call the National Guard. You would call the state building, state uh, office or, or whatever. The, the, the federal government, you, you would go on the news. Oh, they took my, these Moses took, kidnapped. They sent them to Egypt somewhere. You're going to get up and go to Egypt and try to get, get these people back and try to get back at them. So they, so they, they stole... Uh, I don't know the exact number, hundreds and thousands to millions, I don't know the exact number, of our people were brought over here to serve slavery. So you tell them that's a fulfillment of prophecy. And one of the prophecies is you can go to Joel 3, you can go to Isaiah where it says as a ball, um, I cast thee into, matter of fact, I'm going to get that. But the main one is Isaiah 28. 68, but Isaiah, but you, I mean, Deuteronomy 28 and 68, but you say, stay in Deuteronomy, Deut Deuteronomy 28, 30, 31, 32, uh, 47, 48, 49. Um, as you go into the 50s, it speaks about the, and you explain to them, that's talking about the Roman captivity. In Deuteronomy, tw the 28th chapter, it's not talking about one, a fulfillment of one captivity. It's a fulfillment of many captivities. Because it says the, uh, under the nations, it says nations. We went in the cap. Part of the curses was the Babylonians, the Medo Persians, the uh, the Greeks, the Romans, and the current captivity that we're in, which is the Roman Empire all over again. You can tell them all that. Now, if you if you get a lot of pushback and they don't want to hear it, I'm not hearing it. Then five minutes, you, you say, you know what? No problem. We're going to pack up and we're going to leave, shake the dust, and move on. These guys that stay out here for two hours arguing with them, and you can see they can't get it. The scriptures say clearly states um, after after the first and, and after the first and second, um, what is it? Uh, 
admonition, reject. In other words, give them a warning. Look, if you don't get this, I just explained it to you, you're going to be destroyed in America, you know, which is Babylon. Well, Babylon, Babylon is in back in the Middle East, man. What you talking about, brother? What you talking about, man? And this ain't no Egypt. But um, so, so after you admonish them twice, Give them two examples of that, that the Israelites, if they buck it up, what you do is you pack up and you leave. That's all you had to do, which shows you that IUIC is doing their own thing. They're not doing what the Lord says. They're doing some of the things that the Lord said, but they're not doing the things that the Lord said. So what I say, I was going to go to Baal. It's in the scriptures one time in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 22, verse 18. And, and will, he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of, of thy Lord's house. Because the chariots of thy glory is supposed to deliver thee. You're not being delivered. The Most High is pulling back the chariots and the Lord from delivering you so you can fulfill prophecy, uh, for you can uh, pay for the the, um, the sins that you committed that's, that was written in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28. And you might say, well, how? This, it tells you in um, Ezekiel, it also tells you in Deuteronomy 24 that the, uh, the son doesn't pay for the sins of the father and the father doesn't pay for the sins of the son. So they might say that. They might say, if they know that, if they're that deep. Well, wait a minute. That's, that, that was the people of Egypt. Those, those are the Israelites back there. He ain't talking about us now. We're, we can't pay for what our forefathers did. Well, then you tell them there's a thing called reincarnation. And that's going to that's gonna get, get them to run away anyway. But if they can't get it, you move on. You spend no more than about five minutes with them, if that long, and then you just pack up and leave. And you never come back. Shake the dust off me and you never come back. So it says, so, so th what is this describing? This is des describing a ship. You throw a ball in, in, a, any, in a, a river. You, you, you throw a ball in the ocean, in the lake. What it does, it floats. It has what's called buoyancy. So what, what else, what other things have buoyancy? Boats. You have submarines that, that don't float. They're, they're on the bottom, but they can come up to the sur surface, right? Um, but, but ships, when you see ships, you see ships every day. You pass by a river, a lake, you see boats, little boats, big boats, ships, battleships. And they're built to what? To have buoyancy, to keep it afloat. Anyway, and the ball also has buoyancy. So what was the Lord saying right here? He was talking about we're going to be in cargo slave ships. So you back it up with Joel, the third chapter, um, and also uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. So you have to, you, if you give them one scripture, they're, gonna, they're not going to really get the understanding. But when you link them, the scriptures say precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, for with stammering lips and another tongue shall he speak to his people. By the way, the word stammering means to be bad foolish. The, the, mo, the scripture, the most I never said, go out and sound like Alexander Scorby. Look him up. You know, sometimes you might throw a little joke, joke in there. That's what happened with um, Elijah. He was he was snapping hard on the um, the prophets of Baal. He was snapping on them. He was laughing. He was joking. He was snapping on them. So. This is a main scripture right here. But like I said, if they can't see it, then you, you move you move the hell on. Okay, let me find this. Uh, where the hell is it? Okay, here we go. So I'm going to let you listen to this guy. So listen up, listen up, listen up. And especially a pastor. Because a pastor, the scriptures say, um, at least you be wise in your own conceit. That's in um, Romans chapter 11. At least you be Blindness in part has happened in Israel until the time of the Gentiles be come in, meaning the Israel, rest of the Israelites come into the fold of the elect. Least you be wise in your own conceit. Lest you come up with your own ideas. And that's what this pastor is doing. So he's going to talk his way. It's like I'm coming to save somebody 
and I'm saying, come on, I'm gonna save you. There's gonna be a flood, and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna float away with your house, and he don't want to hear it. So there's only so, so I, I gotta get out of there because I'll get caught up in that man. So you go, you tell him two, three times. If he don't get it and he's laughing at you, you go. Then you find out the next day he don't, he, we don't know where the nigga is. So you leave a nigga alone. So let's listen, let's listen, let's listen. You believe that Jesus died for everyone, don't you? And I said, absolutely not. This Fordham, by the way, when I said this, when I told him, I did not believe that Jesus died for everyone in, in, in the entire world. He said, well, then who did Jesus die for? I said, Jesus died for the elect. And this, this. You heard he said Jesus died for the elect, and he clearly doesn't know who the elect are. And we're going to listen to them more, then we're going to go into the precepts. This is back to the basics. Had this, this man was befuddled. He's, he's like, wait a minute, you are a black pastor. Uh, if he was befuddled, that means he wasn't a full-grown teacher. He wasn't a real teacher of the Lord. He really didn't know how to deal with the Bible, whoever the hell he is. Because I would quickly came back and said, well, who are the elect? Then he would have said, his, was he's going to say it anyway. And I would have opened up the scriptures and I would have showed them that the elect are the Israelites. And then there's an elect among, in, within the elect, that's uh, Galatians 6, I think it's 17 around there. Um, it says the Israel of God, meaning there's going to be a chosen out of the Israelites. Not all Israel is Israel is of Israel, uh, uh, Romans chapter 9. So here, this guy is coming with authority. He knows who he's talking about. He may, maybe he went to a theolo theological cemetery, uh, cemetery. That's when you just leave the guy. You leave the guy. But whatever, you, whatever scripture you come with, he, gonna, he, he knows more than you. Plus, their rep, your rep is on the line. They can't, they can't say, well, I was wrong. They can't say that. Because they're going to lose their congregation to the, to the Israelites. So they're holding their congregation. And through that, depending on how big their congregation is, that's how much money this man is making. A black Baptist pastor, and you don't believe that Jesus died for everyone, and you believe that Jesus died for the elect? I said, absolutely. This is where our paths diverged, though, because he said, who are the elect? And I told him, the elect, the elect is anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, has placed faith in him, by way of repentance and faith, has accepted the free offer of salvation. You forgot something among what people? Well, anybody, anybody. No, the elect, he said he was, he was correct, but that all applies to Israel. If you believe in the Lord, if you accept Jesus, as he, they would say, the Christians would say, you do all those things that he just said, but you're an Edomite, you don't receive any salvation. You ask him, what is an Edomite? Now, he may or may not know. If you watch G um, videos of the former one Wessers, he would have an idea of who the Edomites are. He doesn't know who the Edomites are. Like I said, unless, unless he saw us on YouTube. All right, so it says here, this is what happens when you watch GMS take notes but can't let go the save everyone doctrine. And he disagreed with my definition of who the elect are, because according to him, the elect is only the nation of Israel. And I asked him, I said, uh, so can white people be saved? And he said, he said, not the ones in America, at least. Yeah, but when he says white people, you got to qualify the word white. You got Israelites that look just like white people. What's, what's this guy, Blake? Blake Griffin's son. He's he's um he's a teenager now. There's a picture of him. He looks as a child. He looked like an Edomite kid as a teenager, and he really looks like an Edomite kid. You look at look at them pictures of him. Put him Blake Griffin's son. Uh, now he's he got to be maybe 12, 13, maybe a little bit younger. But he's he's a he's a boy. He's a grown boy, but he looks like a little white kid. Well, guess what? He can be saved. You explain that. 
Blake Griff Griffin's son, is he white? He said, yes, he's white. He's going to be saved. What do you mean by that? I'm going to explain it. Because his father's father is an Israelite. He happened to be a Haitian, which we refer to as a Levite. And so you got to talk fast with these people. But this guy's not going to get it. His, re his reputation is on the line. He didn't spend I don't know how, how many years going to Bible school, so he's not going to throw all that away. Remember what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians, I believe it's Philippians 3. He's, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not going to go to it for, for time's sake. The Apostle Paul said, I count all things but dung to receive the, uh, the Messiah, the gifts of the Messiah, and not so many words. He said he was a lawyer. When he came to a lawyer, he was a, a Pharisee. He said he was a Pharisee. He said his father was a Pharisee. He grew up in a proper home, and he was, he was, um, he was uh, classically uh, uh, learned from a tutor. That's in Galatians four. That's why Paul said what he said. You, that that you're you're a child. You're under, even though you're the uh, part of that great household, you're like a servant under the tutor. Tutor, which was Gamaliel. Gamaliel taught him the. He was an expert in the law. The Apostle Paul was an expert in the law. He was on a higher level as far as knowing the scriptures than the other the 12 apostles. He, so he, was, he would be considered learned. The 12 apostles were considered unlearned. Read that in Acts chapter 4. I'm quoting a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to it for time's sake. So, um, so he was able to speak Greek because he was speaking to Israelites that were that all they knew was the Greek language, all they knew was to eat Greek food. But their customs were that of the Greeks. They were Hellenized. So they said, well, we're, we're, not, we're not Israelites. We're, we're black Greeks, you know? So this guy really doesn't know. He, de he doesn't really, he really doesn't know, man. You know? It's a waste of time dealing with this guy. They said, why does black uh, pastors always ask about saving white people? Because that's the uh, go-to people that should be, that's an example of the world. If, if I heard motherfuckers say, if the white man can't be in the kingdom, I'm not going to be in the kingdom either. So I'll say, well, good, you ain't going to be in the kingdom. You won't work out there in the kingdom. You see him digging fucking down walls out in the fucking hot sun. We're going to put your black ass out there with him. And then you get, you're going to get a wake-up call quick. That's why Yahweh by Shemi Hawashai, Yahweh, is going to destroy you niggas on this side. He ain't going to do what he did back in Egypt and take a bunch of you damn niggas and bring you into the wilderness so he can kill all y'all off. And the, and, and, he, and the mixed multitude, because they got killed off. He's going to kill all you niggas that ain't right, and he's only going to save the elect, and he's going to change the elect. So we ain't going to have that mess. When we go into the wilderness this time, ain't going to be no mess in the wilderness. But you're going to have Israelites in the wilderness and around the world that we're going to have to put them back in order. And if they don't get it, like a lot of these, you got a lot of these Latin tribes that want to be Roman Catholic. So we're going to, we're going to kill a lot of them. Then they're going to come to their senses and say, you know what? I think I'm an Israelite now. Yeah, a tribe of Naphtali. Yeah, I'm with that. Shalom. <laughs> so we're going to kick much ass. <laughs> we're going to kick much ass when we come back down on the earth. That's a video right there for you, Apostle Ryan Lobb. We're going to kick much ass, and that's an easy one. Oh, that's an e oh, that's an easy topic, man. I say, uh, Daniel 7 just came to mind. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Daniel 7 and 18, Daniel 7 and 25, Daniel 7 and 9, you know, Daniel 2. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna kick much ass when we come back down here. We're going to kick Esau's ass. We're going to kick Ham's ass. We're going to kick the Ishmael's ass, because they're gonna want to, they're gonna, they're gonna want to pull out their their carpets and and pray five times a day, talking about Allah Akbar. We're gonna kill their asses, all right? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kill you bugged out Israelites that's in the Buddha Buddhism and Roman Catholicism and Islam. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do much damage on you people on this earth, man. And then you're going to realize, well, I'm tired of getting my ass kicked. I'm tired of getting killed. Let me just go ahead and follow these guys. And that's what's going to happen. And I can't wait because Esau is full of pride. So he's going gonna to fight these motherfuckers. Let's roll. And they're going to get rolled on with fire. 
So it's coming, man. It's coming, baby. It's just why does black pastors always ask about saving white people? Either way, if their line goes back to Israel, yes. But he, this blockhead, this blockhead doesn't know. He doesn't know. You know this, ball, this, this bowling ball head nigga, he don't know. And none of these churches, it's a waste of time going to these churches. And they all know about us. They all watch YouTube. And they try to compete with us. Ain't nobody following you, you goddamn Christians. So let's, let's, let's come on. Which I, I said, so how is an individual justified then? How can a person who's a sinner be justified? His, his definite. Well, I can quote the, the Lord in uh, Matthew 19, I believe it's Matthew 19, 16, with a rich man, a young rich man. Uh, he said, what can I do? To, what must I do to be saved? And the Lord did say this. He said, keep the commandments. Matter of fact, let me do this. But this, this is the kicker. If you break one commandment, you're guilty of all. So how are you ultimately saved? Not by the law, but by, but by the Mosai having mercy on you because you accepted him. He became the, the sacrificial lamb, so to speak. He's also known as a lamb and the lion. Let me see. Uh, let me put in keep. Let me put in that keep. Keep the. Commandments. OK, wow, it's in a lot of places. 44 times, I'm sorry, occurs 201 times in 44 verses. Now, what I want to do is, right, so I said, I said Matthew 7, uh, 19 and 16, it's Matthew 19 and 17, but you can start up above that. So let me do this. the rich young ruler. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is the father. This proves that the, 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 the heavenly father is different from the, the Lord because he said he wasn't good. If they were all the same, wouldn't they all be good? Huh? The Heavenly Father, the, the Supreme, the, the Yahweh, the world, world only calls God the Father, is Yahweh. He's good. The Son, the son Yahweh, should I say, I'm not good. And why did he say that? You Christians couldn't answer that in a million years. They said the Most High, but that is the Most High of the Father. But if, he, but if thou wilt, this is Yahweh, should I talking, the Lord talking, Jesus talking, you can understand. But if thou will enter into life, which is the kingdom, keep the commandments. Then he goes on to say, because they say, well, the, Jesus had his own commandments, no, not, not the law of Moses. Well, let's keep reading. He said, he saith unto him, which Yahweh Shai said, thou shalt not murder. Where did he get that from? Law, the law that was given to Moses. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Where did he get that from? The law that was given to Moses. Thou shalt not steal. Where did he get that from? The law that was given to Moses. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Where did he get that from? What is the Lord quoting? He's quoting the commandments that was given to Moses. Now, this is the thing. If you were to come on this earth and be perfect, you can go right into the heavens. You know? Because you kept the law perfectly. But you broke a law. Every last one of us broke a law in our mind and our heart. You break the least a law, as uh, James 10, you're guilty of all. So that's why we needed to save it. That's why Paul said what he said. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the, the wrath to come? That's a Romans, Romans 7 paraphrasing. And he said something else. I just, it was in my mind, left my mind. <clears throat> oh. The, the apostle Paul said, he said, a fa he said, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. When it comes to keeping the law, I'm a Pharisee, meaning I'm a master of the law. 
if we were to have a a, a, a competition of who, who keeps the law better, I might beat you all the time. I was raised up as a Pharisee. He was still, he still had the uh, title of a Pharisee. And his father was a Pharisee. And I said that Gamaliel, he was, he was classically tra trained to know the perfect law. And he knew Greek. And there was a reason why he knew Greek. I said it early in the video, because he was speaking to Israelites that were speaking Greeks. That's why it says in Galatian, Galatians uh, 3 and uh, 28, I believe it's 28, 29, it said the, Jew, the Jews first and then also the Greeks. The Greeks are Israelites that were scattered throughout Asia Minor. There, there weren't other nations of other people. So this is back to the basic. This is easy. So I just showed, I just showed the guy, I said, you can actually keep the law, but you got to keep it perfect. We don't say, oh, we're going to make it because we kept the law. No, we're going to make it because we we trusted, we prayed, and we trusted in the name of Yahweh Bashem Shai. First of all, Jesus is not his name. God is not his name. The Heavenly Father is not his name. The Most High said, call on my name. Call on his name. Do with thy name. And furthermore, uh, John 6, 43, 44, it says, no man cometh but to me except the Father which sent me, draw him, and I will lift him up at the last day. Merely paraphrasing. So you can't come into this, you can't say, well, I decided to follow Jesus. No. The Lord has to put the spirit on you to follow him. That's why you got atheists, you got people that are in the devil worship, the most I didn't put the spirit on. I'm including Jake. You got Jakes that are in the witchcraft. So the most I didn't call him either. So let me come back over here. Let's listen to a little bit more of this block hit. ...of justification or how an individual can be justified was a mix of believing in Christ and works-based righteousness. Well, James says that. Let's go to it. There's another cut for you. James 2. James chapter 2. We can start at, I believe, the fifth verse. You can read the whole chapter. Okay, the Lord chose the poor to earth, rich in faith. Okay, faith and works. What doeth the prophet, my brother, do a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? That's the question, Pastor. If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, depart in peace, be ye. I'll pray for you. I'll pray. You got a pocket full of money, right? You just hit the lotto. Somebody's asking for help. And uh, I'll, pray for, I'll pray for you, son. I'll pray for you. Um, uh, war, uh, warm and filled, notwithstanding, you give him not uh, those things which are needful to the body. What profit is that? That's a work. That's an that's a action. Uh, even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. I don't got to read no more. So how are you saved? You, you first come into this faith. You believe. And the works is what? Doing the will of the Father. That's also in Matthew's uh, uh, 7.21. He that doeth my will. So that's works. If, if you do the will, that means somebody over you is telling you to do this, that, and the third and you doing it. You ain't just saying, well, I believe you. Oh, there's another, there's another parable of the man that said he would do it and didn't do it. And the man that said if he didn't do it and wound up and did it, who was who was justified? So you so we got you again, nigga. And so here's what I would tell you. Whenever you are encountering anyone, not just black Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelites. But anytime you're encountering anyone that is appealing to the works of the law in order to be justified, in order to make a defense of your faith. I guarantee you to prove that he's not, he's, he don't keep the law. I guarantee you this nigga ain't going to dress up in a, with a dress in high heels and a wig on. I guarantee you that. If, if you go, if a man 
that normally goes to the church. He's wearing a suit and tie. Him and a bunch of his men friend, they they come to church dressed up as women. They got the pumps and the, the stockings and all that. They got the dresses. They got they got blind wigs on their head. And then their wives come in dressed up as men. Do you think the church is going to allow them to come in? No. Now, what if they say, well, wait a minute, what am I doing wrong? Well, are you dressing like a woman? And then they'll go to the Lord. They'll, they'll remember the law. A woman does not to wear. Well, wait a minute. And then they ask for tights. That's in the law. So, that, so the church is being, this, this, this black church or church Christianity in general is fully being exposed. This man is not going to dress. He ain't going to put a blind wig on his hair, some goddamn makeup, and wear a dress and high heels. He's not going to do that, man. He's not going to do that. And if anybody in this congregation came in there like that, men coming at it looking like women and women coming in there looking like men, he's going to kick them out, man. So you're being a damn hit. And then you say, well, wait a minute. It's all about faith. I might be a man dressed up as a woman, but it's all about faith. It had nothing to do with the laws. We're not justified by the laws. So the black church is nothing but hypocrisy. So let's listen to a little bit more of this madness. You need to pin them to the law. They want the law, give them all the law they can handle. And this is exactly what I did with this guy. Since he wanted to appeal to the law in order to be justified, I asked him, I said, have you ever broken God's law? I asked him, have you ever? That's why you need a savior. That's why you need a savior. Lusted after a woman. Have you ever broke the Sabbath? They believe I'm going, I'm wrong going to church on Sunday? My well, Sunday is not the Sabbath. And you can't prove otherwise. The question to him was, have you ever not kept the Sabbath? And we're talking about before you came to this knowledge that you are a black Hebrew Israelite, did you ever fail to keep the Sabbath? And his answer was the standard answer that you get whenever you pin somebody to the law. And that is, well, nobody's perfect. But the reality is someone is perfect. And his name is Jesus Christ, and he is the standard. And that's not his name. There was no, there was no J. They didn't call him the Christ. They didn't call him Jesus. There was no J in the uh, in the Hebrew at that time. J didn't come along until like I said, I said early in the video until 50, 50, 1524. A man by the name of Trisino, which which is a um, which is uh, how can I say this? Renaissance language. They had a, a Renaissance uh, alphabet. They took the, the Greek, they took the Hebrew. Hebrew had 22, uh, 22 letters in the Hebrew, and I believe 22 letters in the Greek, if I'm not mis mistaken. If you go back to the Serac, the um, Assyrian tongue, the Aramaic tongue, I believe they're all based upon 22 letters. Trisino added another four letters. That's why in the American alphabet, English alphabet, you got uh, 26 letters. That goes, that roots back to a guy named, by the name of Trisino, and that was during the Renaissance period. Same time, they did away with the language, put a new language up, and then they put images all over the place, and everything is white. Second, uh, uh, Second Thessalonians 2. Um, uh, what is, how is, how's it go? Um, all that is called God. Like any, anytime you go to a building that features the God of the Bible, you're going to see white images, all right? So this man's a lost soul, and he's not going to make it. He, he's glad. If he doesn't wake up and repent, he's clearly not going to make it. And by the way, if he's not of the elect, he, or the Israel of the Most High, he's clearly not going to make it. Of perfection. He is the keeper of the law. He's the one that gives us his righteousness so that we can be justified by faith. And I agree with that. And see, a lot of these Israelites still argue that point. I agree with that. We need a savior. Romans chapter 7 again. In his finished work. That is that was not this guy's definition. And so I'm telling him, I'm preaching Jesus to this guy, whoever he is, was not fully uh schooled in the word. He didn't come. I don't know who the guy is. But he might have saw a couple of videos and decided to be like a self-made prophet.
him now, and I'm telling him about being justified by faith. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, verses 11, that no one is justified by works of the law. And then in verse... Yeah, because we could not keep the law perfectly. You're guilty of one law, you're guilty of all. That's why you need uh, the Savior. That even Paul said that it's not me that sinneth, but sin that dwelleth in me. Romans chapter 7. 24, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, the Apostle Paul said that this law, that this black Hebrew Israelite was depending on, was only a tutor. That it was a tutor that leads us to Christ. When you look at the Ten Commandments. Yeah, but then you still keep the laws if you're coming to this truth. The Apostle Paul said in uh, uh, Col uh, Colossians 2.16, let no man judge you of concerning the high holy day, Sabbath, or uh, any other, the law, he said, which is a shadow of things to come, meaning you can't even gonna keep the law. He said that to who? He didn't say that to the Jews. He said that to the Israelites in a Gentile state of mind coming back in. He didn't put the burden of, okay, now you got to keep all these laws. They're going to they're gonna take a dump truck of laws and dump it on you. So next, tomorrow when I see you, you better have fringes on, you better have phylacteries, you better have this, you better have that. It's not telling you of things that you can do in order to earn your way into. I want to give all the praises and the honor to the Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushah, Bahashem, Recha, Ha, Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of great millstone, honors as well to the brethren, fellow believers of this faith, Shalom to the Pope elect. To the elect peace. So now you can watch the rest of this. <clears throat> it says uh, a black pastor pushes the elect. Well, he's right when he says that. But who are the elect? The elect are Israelites. <clears throat> so I'm going to make it easy. <clears throat> Sometimes all you got to do is put in a word, word search, and just go by that word. And it'll lead you to other precepts and other words. <clears throat> back to the basics so the, the word elect is written is an old and a new testament of uh, 17 times and 17 verses so let's read a couple of them Isaiah 42 verse 1 behold my servant whom I have uh, whom I uphold mine elect in whom my soul delighteth I have put my spirit upon him he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentile. Now that word Gentile is the word Gawaiim. When you go, when you deal with the word Gawaiim in the scriptures, it, it, you read it based upon it. it it's uh, based upon what the what context that it's in. Sometimes the word Gawaiim can talk about Israelites. Sometimes the word Gawaiim could be referring to other nations. So in this case right here, it's talking to the about the Israelites. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that the Gawaiim are also Israelites. It's a general term for nations. Gentile. <clears throat> so the word here is <clears throat> La Gawaiim or two nations. Uh, Gawaiya means nation. So here's a definition. Nation people, in a general sense, nation people, usually of non-Hebrew people, or of descendants of Abraham, of Israel. So, so when you come across the word Gentiles, depending on the context, it could be talking about Israelites. Cornelius was considered a Gentile, but he was in fact an Israelite of swarm of locusts, other animals, Goyim nations. Back to the basics. So who is the elect right here? Yahweh Shai. Are we the elect? Yeah, because we're doing the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So here's the definition of, of the elect. It's only the Israelites. And then among the Israelites, as an elect, there's an elect within the elect. 
It says, uh, Isaiah 45, verse 4, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, meaning the Israelites, and we're going to look it up, mine elect. Now, they might say, well, that's spiritual Israel. I'm going to show you that it's not spiritual Israel. And I'm, I'm going to show you that it's not spiritual Jacob. <clears throat> for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have chosen, I have even called thee by thy name. What, what name did he give us? The name of Israel. When Jake rejects it, what do they do? They leave their, they leave their name, which are Israel, as a curse upon my chosen. No, you take the name back. We ain't accepting that. If the white man can't make it, we don't want to make it. So they left th their name, Israel, as a curse to the children. Chosen. That's also in Isaiah. I believe it's in Isaiah 65. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Because <clears throat> we were lost. A hey, uh, vocab says, well, there's never been a time that Israel uh, was lost to their nationality. The fuck are you talking about, man? It says in Deuteronomy 28, we shall be like the blind groping at noonday, meaning we're looking for something. It's talking about we're looking for the truth, the, the, the meaning of life. And then you find it when you come into Israel. Some of these men come in, and women come into Israel, and then they become disenchanted, and they go back lost again. They go back to grope, groping. All these guys that fell off and stopped doing the work, guaranteed they're back. They're doing what they did before they came in the truth. That's them eight demons on the ass. And they're all going to be destroyed, too. They're all going to take the chip. And a lot of you niggas are going to take that chip because GMS said not to take it. Why well, I mean, I got to listen to no damn GMS. You know they ain't right. The most I ain't dealing with. I'm going to take, take it anyway. Some of you niggas are going to brag about you took it. Yeah, I took it, nigga. What you going to do to her? And I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to laugh at you, man. If they have actual chipping stations, like door, uh, storefront chipping stations and tents like they did with the JJ, with the, uh, the Juicy Juice, we're going to actually have cameras and we're going to interview people. <laughs> what, do they, what, do they, what do they think about? Oh, this is great. We're going to have fun on that day. But everything's going to be move. Everything's going to move quick. It says, um, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. So the Lord is only dealing with Israel. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou has not known me. So the most I had to reintroduce himself, allow me to reintroduce myself. He had to reintroduce himself to the Israelites, because none of us knew that we were, some of us grew up in, in a family that knew that they were Jake, but my parents knew that they were Israelites, but they said, oh, the white man is Japheth, and what else did they say? Oh, the name of the Most High is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahshua. That didn't resonate with me. When I heard the white man is, uh, are the uh, Edomites, and uh, the name of the father is Yahweh, and the name of the son is Yahweh Shai, the spirit agreed. I said, yep, that's, that's his name. That's his name. The first time I heard Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is when I went to the school. Ain't no other Israelite taught that. Now you got a lot of other these, these other Israelite groups that were not part of One West that are saying Yahweh Shai now. So if you're calling on uh, Yeshua and Ye Yahweh, that's not his name. You haven't come fully into, the, into this truth. It says, I have surnamed me, though thou has not known me, and the place where it said, yeah, not my people there, it shall be said, yeah, the sons of living power. So who's saying it? The prophets on the highways and the byways on, on YouTube. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah and the heritage of my mountains and mine elect, who are the elect? Israel, mine elect, shall inherit it and my servant shall dwell there. I don't have to read anymore. Oh, what about the New Testament? Okay, let's go to the New Testament, Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets and shall show great signs and will do very, you know, things. Help the poor, uh, clean communities, all kind of stuff. Uh, march down the street. And so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So, you know, IUIC is out there doing all these things. How many members of GMS said, I'm not, no longer GMS. I'm seeing the way they marching. You guys don't give out T-shirts. You ain't helping the community. 
man, we ain't dealing with, fuck the community, man. We ain't dealing with no community. We dealing with the elect. So ain't none of you, none of these guys in GMS have left and joined the IUIC, or for that matter, IUCPK. In the beginning, there's some did. But uh, but if if that's the, if that's you know, if you guys' words are so compelling, you would have guys from GMS left and right leaving. Now, if you want to leave, go ahead and fucking leave. Don't even tell me. Just go ahead and leave, get you a purple, purple uh t-shirt and march down the street talking about who's the king Christ. Anyway, I don't got to read no more. I just showed the nigga. It says Jacob, Judah. Those are Israelites, right? It says, uh, for Jacob, my servant's sake. Look up the word Jacob. It's talking about the son, the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham, the father of the patriarchs, of the 12 patriarchs. And Israel, mine elect. Let's look up the word Israel. I'm going to close. I promise I'm going to close. So this guy that was talking to him, he wasn't equipped. He wasn't fully equipped to deal with this man. He didn't eat the whole roll. They said, for Jacob, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have chosen, I have even called thee by, my, by thy name. Some of these guys say Yisrael. That's not his name. Yish, Yish, some of them just call him Yah. Yah. His name is Yah. Uh, let me see. Jacob is he, uh, Yaquab. Israel. Let's see what Israel. The word there is Wa, Wa, Yasha Allah, or end Israel. Now, even the blue letter goes off on this. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. So it says, Yah meaning he, Shah meaning prince, and Allah meaning God. So they got it right over here, but when you click on it, it does it says something else. Allah meaning God and Shah. It should be Shah. Uh, Shah. Um, this, this should mean prince. It says Israel, God prevailed. It doesn't mean that. The angel said what it meant. This, the second name of Jacob given to him by God after his wrestling with the angel at Peniel, the face of God, or the, the pun, 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 uh, Panya Allah, or Pana Allah. Pen, Penuel are the name of the descendants of the nation of the, of the descendants of Jacob. Not talking about any, any it doesn't say spiritual Israel. It says the Israelites. So now let's click on this, H8280. So the blue letter goes off on certain things. They're on point maybe 97% of the time. So they said the word Shah, but they say Shah Ra, which is, which is princess. It's Shah. See, Shah, Shah Ra makes it princess. The ha uh, suffix makes it feminine. The word is Shah, which means prince. So what do they say? Oh, it means power. It means no, nope. Allah means power. Uh, contend, have power. Uh, contend, priest, uh, persist. Now I'm gonna show you that, and I'm gonna close. I'm gonna show you that the word prince is, uh, let's go to it, prince. Uh, do, uh, Genesis 32 verse 28 and I did this before a couple of times and he said, the angel said thy name shall be called no more Yaquab but Yasha Allah and then he breaks it down gives you the meaning for as a prince that's showing you right there that the name Yasha Allah, the word prince is in there didn't the angel Gabriel say you shall call his name Yahweh Shai, 
for he, Yah, shall save, deliver, shall, uh, sh um, how is shy, his people. So the angel breaks it down. If anybody knows Hebrew, shouldn't, shouldn't the, the spirits, the angels know? He came fre fre fresh out of the spiritual realm. And they speak Hebrew. It says, and he said, uh, thy name shall be called no more Yaquab, but Yasha Allah. For as a prince hath thou power with God and, and with men and has prevailed. So they'll say it means he prevailed. Doesn't mean that. Yasha Israel is Yah, he, Shah. That's why the angel said prince. Power with God. Israel. Matter of fact, let me do this. Yeah, I'm going to close. Let me pull this up and pull up the word Israel. And see, the thing about y'all, when we do videos, when we used to do it years ago, we do videos on it, on uh, Hebrew, y'all don't watch it. If we go deep in the, into uh, like uh, the Hebrew and the Greek, you know, y'all y'all on wild now. Now, that's not my cup of tea. You know, because you got to think to in the Hebrew. You got to use your brain. And this is one of the reasons why um, and my, my belief is, you know, uh, General um, General Netanyahu, which he went back to the ancient Hebrew, he called it Ebonics. Um, he he he. At one time, he was all into the Hebrew. He did that video with uh, Ben Yumyun about the name of the truth, the Most. I brought out all kind of books, and if you look this up, see the word is Yahweh, and the son's name is Yahweh Shai. You can't see it, and we had to get this book, uh, History of the American Indians. They called on Yahweh, but all of a sudden. The, yeah, um, they call it a hill. Let, let, let me see some. Let me see some. Bear me for a minute. I think I got the video up. Bear me for a minute. Maybe I took it down. I thought I had it. Let me try this. Bear me for a minute. Well, there's one, there's one um, video that was put up by one of the camps at the IUIC, and they mentioned that the Hebrew was bootleg. It was bootleg Hebrew. They said it was bootleg Hebrew. It's not real Hebrew. But uh, for, for strange, for strange, some strange reason, you know, Nathaniel, Nathaniel went back to being Nathaniel God. Nathaniel God, which was his name back, that was name given to him by Ariah when he came into one West. So why is he going back to the Hebrew? He playing games, man. So let's go to uh, he said name. So here it is. If you break it down, Yah means he. If Yah was at the end of the word or the uh, instead of the prefix, it was the suffix. The suffix is something that you like in, go in, go is to move, right? The ing says, I am going, makes it uh, present, present tense. Yah means he, Shah means prince. It means prince, and Allah means God. So, he prints God, or he is a prince with God. So why did the blue letter go off? Why did they say, oh, he, he prevails with God, the power and all that? So, cause, so it says here, the angel said, why, am I, why are you being called this? Because as a prince, here it is. Shah, and they're going off on this. This the Shah, the Ha, the suffix Ha makes it feminine. So it would say here it would say as a princess. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if that comes up. 
uh, Sha, Sha Ra, Sha Ra, instead of Sha, which is Prince. Let me put in Princess. Let's see what comes up. I'm sorry, SS. I think I spelled that wrong. Okay, princess. Let's see what comes up. All right, princess. It says princess. What does it say? Shara. So they went off. They said Shara means prince or prevail. Princess. If it was a prince, it would be Shah. That's why the angel said, as a prince, it's Shah. Not Shara. Now let's look up the word Sarah. Let's see what that that goes back to. What your name was Sarai or Sharaya, which means princess my or my princess. The most I said, nope, she's not your princess. She's a princess over Israel. She's not your personal princess. So now let's go to uh what I say I was gonna go. Oh, Sarah. There's a song put up by uh, Butler. What's his first name? There's a song called Sarah, Sarah. What happened to you and I? This guy from South Africa, you look at the guy, you listen to his voice, that's a jig. I said that years ago. I said, how the hell he could be showing you that a lot of those uh, people in South Africa are Jake's. So this is Sarah. A great song, too. A great, a great singer out of South Africa. He kind of looked like a Dominican. Look it up. Jonathan Butler. Jonathan Butler, great singer out of South Africa. He did a song called Sarah, Sarah, which is Hebrew for princess. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we go. Uh, Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai or Saraya, but Sarah shall her name be. And so the prince, my princess is princess. So let's go, let's see what it says. They went off on this again. They went off. That's my prince. Okay, wife also means when you come across the word woman or wife, the word is it's supposed to be ya, ya, ash, ya, not yasha. It should be ya, ash, ya. I mean, ayasha. It's supposed to be a ya there. Smallest character in the Hebrew which is a uh, woman or wife. Shah uh, Yah is my prince. It's supposed to be a, a ha right there. Okay, so it says, but a name shall be Sarah. What's that right there? Shara, Shara. That's a feminine of Sha. So the blue letter went off. They went off. That's why the scripture says, study to, study to show thyself approved. And I'm not even really into the Hebrew like I used to be, but I remember you, it's like, hey, the Hebrew 
learning and understanding Hebrew is like riding a bicycle. If you ain't rode a bicycle in, in 20 years, you're going to get on it and you're going to go be a little off balance. And then a minute later, you're going to be dry, riding like you dry, ride it every day. Am I correct? So it's the same thing with the Hebrew. If I was to dedicate myself into going, because I know a lot of those, remember a lot of those Hebrew words, but if I was to dedicate a month to the Hebrew, I would get, I would get, go back to that where I was, because I was actually teaching Hebrew. You got, you got Monagon, the elder Monagon out of D.C. He goes into the, into the Hebrew, but I believe he was part of a raised up as an Israelite under his parents, so he, he knew the Hebrew. There's, there was a, one brother, Shalama. I don't know what happened to him. But he came up under, under uh, Arya myself, Arya. It was he was in this thing before I was, and he shot up so he he was so good at the Hebrew that he surpassed Arya, and Arya can speak to so-called Jews. This guy was able to hold a full conversation with a small hat, and then turn around and teach the ancient Hebrew. And when he would read the Torah, he would read it like you read read the English. You just read it, blah, 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 blah. And then you say, what does that word mean? He'll say, it means that. Let's move on. He, he, the, mo the spirit was on him. He was a master at that Hebrew, man. He wasn't really all into, like, if you guys want to break this down, he get kind of he was kind of stuck on it. But that, that Hebrew, he like I said, he far surpassed Ariel. Ariel had to say, man, this man knows Hebrew better than me. You know? I'll give you a little story before I close to show you that the Hebrew that Ariad taught, he knew the, the small hat Hebrew, the JJ Hebrew, he knew the ancient Hebrew. He had wrote, he had went down to uh, the synagogue, the synagogue. It was like a community of JJs down there on Eastern Parkway. This was in 85. And he had put a sign together. This is, I believe the second or the third time he went down there. And um, he put a sign together and he wrote it in, um, you know, uh, Syrian Hebrew or, uh, well, Hebrew, modern Hebrew. He, he, it was like a, a sign that was about four, three and a half, four feet high with number Hebrew on it, right? He wrote, wrote it with a magic marker and he put it out there and them small, and them small hats came out there and they looked at the sign and they trying to, and, they, and then you can see the guy getting mad. He said, we ain't bastards, we ain't dogs because Ariad cursed him out. He said, you're a bunch of dogs, you're a bunch of lies, you're a bunch of demons. You're a bunch of devils, and you're going. To, he wrote that in Hebrew, and they and to show you that he knows Hebrew, those small hats read it, and they got mad. I ain't no bastard, I ain't no devil. So don't tell me, Vocab Malone, that we just faking it. That's fake language, man. Even if you go to the Ben Yehudi pocket uh, English Hebrew, Hebrew English dictionary, in the book, he, he shows you there's a page that he shows you what the ancient Hebrew looked like. So, anyway, with that, I'm gonna say shalom.